Hello and welcome to Oncolink. I'll start with a very simple example and then I'll go into more and more detail as the video progresses. So to get started, all you have to do is type in your gene here. Here's an example of a gene I typed in. Uppercase, lowercase, does not matter. Spaces don't matter. Um, you can submit that. And you'll get results for up to 21 different Cox regression analyses. These are pre-computed. Um, basically, you will want to look at a couple columns. So the Cox coefficient tells you the contribution to the hazard ratio, which sounds complicated, but all it's saying is that a positive coefficient increases the hazard ratio, and the larger the number, the more so it does. So a positive number increases the risk of death in this case, and that's correlating with expression. This is all expression correlations. So the higher expression of this gene um, results in a higher chance of death. And the negative um, coefficient would be a higher expression uh, results in a less chance of death. And then you'll get the p-value for the analysis and then FDR corrected p-value and the FDR correction is performed per row. So it's only for the genes that were analyzed in this cancer. So the FDR correction has nothing to do with genes in, in the, that were analyzed here, only it's a per row FDR correction. And same with the rank, it's a per row rank. So this gene is the third most correlated gene to survival in, in Kirk. And if you want to know what the cancers are, you can just uh, hover over this and it'll give you the, the full name. And then you also get uh, the expression of the gene and this will tell you exactly what the expression is. And then if you want a Kaplan plot and, you, and if you want to download the data, all you have to do is click on this link. Um, you need to type in non-overlapping numbers. I would recommend um, 2525 if you have a lot of patients. Submit that. You'll get a log rank p-value, which is calculated very quickly. Sometimes the cabin plot um, will take some time to generate. And then below the cabin plot, you'll get the data that was plotted. So the patients are sorted by the expression. So this patient had the lowest expression in this cancer for, the, for this gene. And then the expression increases um, as you go down. And um, this patient all the way down here um, had the highest expression of that gene in that, in that cancer. And then if you want to download this data for further analysis, you just click this, um, this button and it'll give you a CSV file. And it will be conveniently named once, um, once it shows up. Yes, yeah, so it'll tell you the cancer you're looking at the gene ID. So in this case, I inputted a gene symbol for the search, but this file uses the gene ID because gene symbols are not necessarily unique. This is the Entrez ID. So if you send this file to someone, they'll see the Entrez ID. They'll know what gene you're talking about. They'll know what cancer you're talking about. And they'll see the percentiles that the patients were divided into. And then if you want to use this uh, plot in a publication, all you have to do is click this, this button here. It'll take you to a PDF um, like this. And the file will be named exactly the same. Same, same thing. Um, cancer, Entrez ID, lower, upper. Um, PDF is nice because you can use um, Illustrator or Inkscape if you're unhappy with uh, where these labels are in, in Illustrator, you could, you could alter those. Okay, that's the, that's the basic usage of, of Oncolink. A little bit more advanced usage is if you want the complete data set, so maybe you're not happy with how the Kaplan-Meier plots are being plotted, you need to use 100 for lower and zero for upper and submit. And one thing that happens on Firefox and maybe other browsers is the plot um, doesn't necessarily reload. So make sure if you make a second plot to reload, reload your browser. So obviously if you only have uh, one group, you're not going to get a log rank p-value. There's no, there's, 
There's only one group, so there's nothing to compare. Um, this is just all the data, and then all the data will be in the, in the load group. And then you could download the entire data set, and then you could use a different software to create your, your plot if you're unhappy with, with how these plots are. Okay, I'll go into some more detail now. So what exactly, what gene names can you type in here? So if you don't type anything in, you'll get an error. If you type in an incorrect name, you'll be given these links. So these links will tell you every single symbol that Oncolink will accept. This includes mRNAs, microRNAs, and link RNA names. So for example, if you want to find the uh, microRNAs, you just look for HSA, and the, this would be all the microRNAs that Oncolink accepts. And then similarly for the um, IDs, you'd click that link. And the search box is only 22 characters long because that's the longest possible um, gene name. So if your gene name is longer than 22 characters, um, you, you're not using the correct, the correct name. So how do you get the correct name for your gene? So Oncolink uses updated Entrez gene IDs and Hugo names. So when you go to the TCGA and you download the tier three data, you, you go here and you, you click on a cancer and you go to you go to mRNA, for example, and then you click RNA seq V2, you download it. I have a file already downloaded. And this is this is what you get. You get the Hugo gene symbol and you get the Entrez ID. The problem is when the TCGA project started, you know, they they started with a certain um, definition file for what for genes when they uh, um, mapped their data for RNA seq, and as the project went along, they they for consistency they they used the exact same annotation file for all their analyses. Um, what's happened though is that these IDs and names are out of date, so I've gone through using NCBI gene to update these names. So Oncolink will not accept an old name if it got changed. It only accepts modern names. So if you want to figure out what the most recent name of your gene is, just go to NCBI gene and uh, type it in. For example, we, we were looking at Donson and um, it should tell us, yeah, so and then tells you the Entrez ID right here. And that was the ID that was in the files we were trying to download. Okay, so what about uh, microRNAs? MicroRNAs are a little bit interesting. So you need, you need the current mature MERBase accession number or name. So what does that mean? So if you go to MERBase, you go to Browse, you go to Human, I gotta click human. This is not the name, these are not the names. Th these are the stem loops. So let's let's actually look at a, a, an interesting one. So I clicked on this already. So this is the stem loop and it tells you that. The stem loop is what TCGA has in their annotation files, but I went through and using the accession numbers and genomic coordinates, I updated the names. So Oncolink only accepts this name or this name. It has to be the mature name or it has to be the accession number. Um, as you can see, the, the 3P is, is much more highly expressed than the, the 5P. So let's go ahead and uh, we can we can go ahead and take a look at that. Let's type that in there. Um, yeah, so this one's actually really interesting because in Kirk, it's ranked number one. In Kerp, it's ranked number two. 
and they actually, I mean, these are both kidney cancers, and the expression is actually uh, pretty similar as well. And the Cox coefficients are in the same direction, so it definitely looks like uh, this microRNA could have a role in kidney cancer. Okay, so what about my, my transcriptome beta link RNAs? Um, what, what are those? So this, this paper, oops, I, I was already over there. Um, this paper, it came out, um, it came out about a year ago, and they made this data portal, and it has about, the, they've only released the beta data set, but it has about 8,000, um, it tells you if, you if you go to browse, it has about 8,000 of the most differentially expressed um, long non-coding RNAs. So I was, I was looking at this one. So let's, um, let's go ahead and take a look at that. So Oncolink will accept the name, the name, or it will accept um, this transcript ID. Either one will be, will be fine. Yeah, so, so we have this error message. Um, why, why do we only have two cancers? So when I, when I perform the Cox regression analyses, I have an expression cutoff, and if the gene doesn't meet the expression cutoff, then um, an analysis is not performed for that cancer. And link RNAs, um, as you can see, uh, they have very low expression in many, many of the cancers. Here you see that lower grade glioma has high expression, and not surprisingly, the LGG has, has high expression. Um, the files that I that I used uh, for for the analysis was the the normalized counts, so that's why the numbers don't correspond. Uh, they're showing FPK. I mean, I'm using uh, their normalized counts. Okay, so that was that was link RNAs. Um, Let's let's talk about how how this compares to some other some other data portals that are out there. Um, you might be wondering how is this any different from uh, CBIR portal, for example. So the purpose of Oncolink is not to replace CBIR portal. Um, Oncolink only contains expression information along with um, the cost regression results and survival um, clinical data. It doesn't contain any mutations, any, any methylation or anything. It's all about expression and survival data. So it's, it's really just a, a small sort of niche, um, what Oncolink is, is doing. So it, it has a couple improvements over CBAR portal. So first of all, oh no, you, this is where you type in the, the cancer. Um, so you type in the cancer, and you can only search one cancer at a time on CBAR portal. And then you type in your gene down here, and you can only divide the patients in in half by Z score. You can't do upper or lower twenty five percent. So if we search for that, so so yeah, so the patients are divided right here. So these that's not really how you want to divide patients. You really want to be comparing the lowest expressing patient, patients and the, the highest expressing patients, which is what Oncolink allows for you to do. And also, Cox regression is a better uh, method for doing survival analysis than Kaplan-Meier. Kaplan-Meier is more of a visual tool than than statistical um, because it doesn't take into account um, age of the patient. For example, if, you're, if your gene correlates with age, uh, Kaplan-Meier won't pick that up, but the Cox regression uh, results could. If your uh, gene correlates with grade, um, Cox regression will pick that up, but Kaplan-Meier uh, won't notice that. So you can get um, spurious results with Kaplan-Meier analysis. Um, 
And then see bar portal, one problem is like when you go to download um, the, the PDF, like it doesn't give you any information about what gene you were looking at or, or what cancer you were looking at. Then when you go download the data, um, it doesn't give you the, the survival data, so you can't really make uh, plots on your own. Um, and it only gives you, let's see if I can open this file or not. Notepad. Yeah, so it only gives you Z scores. So it doesn't give you the, the, raw, the raw expression. Um, then obviously, uh, because they're extracting directly from the TCGA data, if you if you type in a modern uh, Merbase name, you uh, I have to first I have to first hit the micro RNA. Um, it it won't it won't accept it. So you have to um, I guess I have to can I just close. Again. Or one thirty B. Here we go. Um, yeah, so it, you have to do the the stem loop, which um, you know for this. I mean, for this microRNA, it might not, it might not make that much difference. Um, all the reads are pretty much at the three p end. Um, so if you assumed that the stem loop was all the 3p then it wouldn't matter but um, what if the reads were more evenly distributed and then you did a survival analysis with the stem loop um, you know you wouldn't really know which mature sequence to assign the survival analysis to and um, that's that's pretty important because I mean it's the mature sequence that actually is the effector of the, it's the microRNA basically. The stem loop doesn't really have a function. It's the mature microRNA sequence. And obviously, uh, CBAR portal doesn't have um, the mitranscriptome link RNAs in it. Okay, I think I, I, think I covered um, the basics of, of Oncolink. Um, if you have any questions or any problems with the site, just email. You can follow me on Twitter or you can um, email me. My email's at omnisres, um, it's at the publication. Um, hope you enjoy the site.